Uh, I'm just doing my fro. I'm just getting ready to say my lines. No, I found one. I'm not sure you have lines. I'm not sure I have lines. Good afternoon, brethren, ladies, friends of the Grand Lodge of Connecticut. I'm pleased to welcome you here to the installation of Brother Bruce Raymond Belmore as most worshipful Grand Master. Brother Installing Grand Marshal, you will retire to the ante room and escort into the rod lodge room the officers elected and appointed, save the most worshipful Grand Master elect.
Brethren and members of this most worshipful Grand Lodge AF and AM of Connecticut, you have duly elected your Grand Master and other Grand Lodge officers for the ensuing year, and we are now ready to perform the ceremony of their installation into office. <clears throat> Brother Installing Grand Marshal, you present the Grand Master elect west of the altar. Brother Installing Grand Marshal, you will cause our Grand Master elect to kneel at our altar for the purpose of prayer and there to take upon himself his official obligations as Grand Master. Almighty Father of the universe, and to our present convention, and grant that this thy servant may dedicate and devote himself with a competency of thy divine wisdom. Endure him with a competency of his divine wisdom, that the secrets of our right may be better enabled to display the beauties of brotherly love, truth, and justice, and furnish us an example of temperance and fortitude and justice to the honor of thy holy name. Amen. So so be. My brother, you will say I and pronounce your name in full. I, Bruce Raymond Balmore. Now repeat after me. In the presence of Almighty God. In the presence of Almighty God. And this most worshipful Grand Lodge. And this most worshipful Grand Lodge. Do solemnly promise. Do solemnly promise. That I will. That I will. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Perform all the duties of Grand Master. Perform all the duties of Grand Master. Strictly conforming. Strictly conforming to the Constitution, laws, rules, and regulations. To the Constitution, laws, rules, and regulations. And to the ancient customs and usages of the fraternity of free and accepted Masons. And to the ancient customs and usage of the fraternity of ancient free and accepted Masons. And will always. And will always. Enforce them. Enforce them. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Arise, most worshipful, for thus are you to be known henceforth among the fraternity of free and accepted Mason. My brother, when I induct you into the chair of office in the Grand East, it will be in the performance of the solemn duty, symbolic of the commencement of your governance of the ancient craft in Connecticut. The interests, well-being of Connecticut Masons, for better or worse, are your responsibility. By immemorial usage of the landmarks of masonry, you as Grand Master are invested with great authority and grave responsibility. A generous and understanding mind is made cautious and gentle in the exercise of the power of authority. To rule and govern well is an honorable ambition, but it is not by the strong arm or iron will that obedience and order the chief requisites of good government are secured. Rather, 
It is by knowing the way to the hearts of men. The office of Grand Master is of antiquity and respect. It is one of the highest dignities to which a Mason may aspire. Look well to the grandees. Brother installing Grand Marshal, you will present our Grand Master in the East. <clears throat> Most worshipful sir, it is my pleasure to invest you with the outward insignias of your office, your purple collar and jewel. Yeah. Much better. <laughs> and I invest you with your chapeau, once so ably worn by our ancient grandmaster Solomon, King of Israel, and may a portion of his wisdom descend upon and abide with you. <laughs> My brother, stand to your work and be firm halting not in your way, balking the work half done for an instant dole of praise. Stand to your work and be strong, certain of tongue and of pen, for you're neither a god nor a child, but a man in a world of men. Most worshipful sir, I now relinquish to you the seat of authority in the Grand East and tender you this first act as homage of Grand Master of Masons in Connecticut. Most worshipful Grand Master, <laughs> behold your brethren and friends. Friends and brethren, behold your Grand Master. You will greet him with a hearty round of applause. Most worshipful as a token of your authority over this Grand Lodge, I now present you with your gavel. Use it not autocratically, but with firmness and justice, ever remembering that to reign sovereign in the hearts and affections of your brethren is far more gratifying than to rule over their lives and fortunes. Most first for Brother Charlie, I return the gavel to you that you can continue with the installation. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Brother installing Grand Marshal, you will conduct the Deputy Grand Master elect to the altar and cause him to kneel so that in the presence of this Grand Lodge, he may also take upon himself the obligations of office. I'd like to serve this lodge as Deputy Grand Master for the New Syrian Year. You'll you cause our brother to kneel. <laughs> At the outset, when Freemasonry in its wisdom organized the concept of the Grand Lodge, 
the office of deputy grandmaster was introduced into the structure. So, Brother Porco, having given your attention to the ceremony of the installation of the most worshipful grandmaster, and your knowledge of our constitutions and regulations, you are aware that in the case of his incapacity to act in the fulfillment of the responsibilities of his office, you will succeed to his duties and prerogatives as you do also when acting in his substitute in any matter specifically designated to you. Your office, therefore, is one of great dignity and importance. Remember and contemplate all that has been said and assumed by the Grand Master, for you know not how soon such responsibility may have a personal application to you. Remember also that Masonic usage, as well as our specific regulations, have placed you in a most intimate and confidential relationship with him as supporter and counselor. Brother Joseph J. Porco, do you obligate yourself without the least equivocation or mental reservation to all the duties of your office, so help you God? I do. Brother installing Grand Marshal, you will conduct the Deputy Grand Master to his station in the lodge, after which you will present the Right Worshipful Sir, I place you in your seat at the right hand of the Most Worshipful Grand Master. Installing Grand Marshal, you will cause the other Grand Lodge officers elected and appointed to rise and place their right hands over their hearts. My brothers, as officers of the Grand Lodge serving with Most Worshipful Brother Belmore for the ensuing year, you have heard our Grand Master obligate himself to the duties of his office agreeable to our Grand Lodge Constitution's rules and regulations. Do you fully, freely, without equivocation or reservation, assume such obligations and specifically as they apply to the duties and responsibilities of your individual office? So help you God. Brother installing Grand Marshal, you will seat all but the grand Lord who you'll present West Altar for installation. Brothers Grand Senior Warden and Brother Jan Grand Junior Warden, when the Grand Master looks from the east over the Grand Lodge assembled, he sees the ever familiar lodge with the Grand Senior Warden in the west, the Grand Junior Warden in the south, and the other officers in their proper stations and places. Thus, the importance of your stations is underscored. The Grand Wardens are two officers with singularity in function, but having duality in purpose. Brother Grand Senior Warden, you will now be invested with the jewel of your office. Brother Grand Senior Warden, you will look well to the West. Brother Grand Junior Warden, you will look well to the Grand South. Serve both the most worshipful Grand Master and the craft 
in your commitment to office. Brother and Saul and Grand Marshal, you will escort the wardens to their respective stations, after which you will present the Grand Treasurer and Deputy Grand Treasurer. Personal sir, I present Brother Thomas J. Gondek to be installed as Right Worshipful Grand Treasurer and Brother Brian E. Beals as Right Worshipful Grand Treasurer Assistant. Right Worshipful Brother Thomas J. Gondek, you have been elected to serve Connecticut Freemasonry as Grand Treasurer of the Grand Lodge. The funds, books, and fiscal management are placed in your care as one well qualified to keep and manage them as you have demonstrated in your past service. They must never be used by you in any other manner than the Constitution's laws and regulations of the Grand Lodge shall direct. The jewel of your office, the keys with which you are now invested, Brother Grand Stalling Grand Marshal, have a twofold significance. They are instruments to bind as well as to loose, to make fast as well as to open. Right Worship Brother Brian Beals, you have been appointed to serve Connecticut Freemasonry as Deputy Grand Treasurer of this Grand Lodge. You have heard the duties and responsibilities of the Grand Treasurer. You are to maintain a constant vigil over the fiscal management of this Grand Lodge, keeping yourself ever ready to respond to the needs of the Grand Treasurer and to assume the duties of that office should circumstances warrant. You will now be conducted by the installing, installing Grand Marshal to your place in the Lodge, after which, Brother Grand Marshal, you will present the Grand Secretary and Deputy Grand Secretary for installation. Sir, I present Brother James M. Anderson, who has been elected to serve this lodge as Grand Secretary, and Brother Gregory K. Whitehouse to serve as his assistant. Right Worshipful Brother James M. Anderson, you have been elected to serve the Grand Lodge as Grand Secretary. The duties of your office are numerous, varied, and demanding. Your ability to promptly and faithfully execute them has induced your brethren to put their trust in you. I invest you with the jewel of your, the Grand Seconds, the Grand Marshal will invest you with the jewel of your office. Bearing the pens of the recorder's craft, symbolic of your obligation to the Masons of Connecticut to keep a true and just account of your official doings in their behalf. Right Worshipful Brother Gregory K. Whitehouse, you have been appointed to serve Connecticut Freemasonry as Deputy Grand Secretary of this Grand Lodge. You have heard the duties and responsibilities of the Grand Secretary. You are to maintain a constant vigilance over the administrative management of this Grand Lodge keeping yourself ever ready to respond to the needs of the Grand Secretary and to assume the duties of that office should circumstances warrant.
Brother Installing Marshal, you will conduct the Grand Secretary and his deputy to their places in the lodge, after which you will present the Grand Deacons west of the altar. <clears throat> Merciful Sir, I present Brother Ronaldo Migliano and Brother Shane Dupraine to be installed as Grand Senior Deacon and Junior Deacon. Right Worshipful Brothers, vigilance and zeal are necessary requisites of the representative office of your representative offices in our Grand Lodge. As participants in Grand Lodge ceremonies, your official positions are essential to the comfort and good order of all present. As Grand Senior and Junior Deacons, you are now invested with your jewels of office. And the Grand Tyler will present you with the rods, symbols of your deputed authority and function. On those occasions when you as deacons along with the Grand Stewards are called upon to erect with your rods the arch of the symbolic lodge, you yourselves become a living part of that arch for all to behold, so mote it be. Brother Installing Grand Marshal, you will Escort the Grand Deacons to their respective places in the Grand Lodge, after which you will present the Grand Marshal for installation. <clears throat> present Brother J or F. Matthew Heinrich Jr. to be installed as Grand Marshal. Right Worshipful Brother F. Matthew Heinrich Jr., the good of the Grand Master's ceremonial relationships with his officers and with the fraternity in its general assemblies and processions depends upon your skill and assiduity. The duties of your office require energy, activity, quickness and perception, and an always radiant personality in the service of both the Grand Master and the Grand Lodge. Possessing such qualifications, you are invested with your jewel and baton by installing Grand Marshal. Brother Installing Grand Marshal, you will conduct the Marshal to his place in the lodge, after which you will present the stewards for installation.
sir, I present you with her. Mark H. Hawkins, no relation, uh, has been installed as Grand Junior Steward, and Brother Matthew F. Griffin as Grand Junior Steward. Right Worshipful Brothers, attention and diligence in the observation of the workings of the Grand Lodge are essential requisites of your office in our Grand Lodge. As Grand Senior Steward and Grand Junior Steward, <clears throat> you are now invested with the jewels of your office, And the Grand Tyler will present you with your rods, the emblems of your authority. What was said to the Grand Deacons concerning participation in ceremonies where the rods are carried applies equally to the Grand Stewards. Strive to excel in all you do in Freemasonry. Brother Installing Grand Marshal, you will conduct the stewards to their places in the lodge, after which you will present the Grand Chaplain west of the altar for installation. <clears throat> Is he able to come up here? Okay. Ken knows that? Ken know that? Right Worshipful Brother Eric A. Silver, you have been appointed to the sacred position of Grand Chaplain and are now invested with the jewel of your office. The principles of morality and virtue, which you are accustomed to expound to the world as a minister of God, will be appropriate lessons you will be expected to recommend to your brethren. The profession that you have chosen as your lot in life affords the best proof that you will discharge the duties of your present appointment with loyalty to your God and to this Grand Lodge and with faith as well as charity towards all mankind. Brother Installing Marshal, you will conduct the chaplain to his place in the lodge, after which you will present the Grand Almoner. Brother Carl Anderson, who has been 
appointed Alm owner for the ensuing year. Right Worshipful Brother, you have been appointed Grand Almoner of this Grand Lodge for the ensuing year and are now invested with the jewel of your office. As the Grand Chaplain is responsible for attending to the spiritual needs of the Brethren, the Grand Almoner is responsible for attending to the Grand Lodge's effort to provide assistance in time of adversity and need. You have the responsibility of being well informed about the health and well-being of the members who compose the Grand Lodge family, so that when adversity arises, the Grand Lodge can assist the members' lodges in fulfilling their duties to help aid and assist. Your duties will require patience, sensitivity, compassion, a listening ear and a caring heart, an understanding of the benefits that each of our Masonic charities can bestow together with the process for obtaining the necessary assistance is very important. I wish you every success and personal satisfaction as you carry out your important duties. Brother Installing Grand Marshal, you will conduct the Grand Almoner to his place in the lodge, after which you will present the Grand Organist for installation. Present Brother Gary Graham, who has been appointed to serve as an organist for the ensuing year. Right Worshipful Brother, you have been appointed Grand Organist of this Grand Lodge for the ensuing year and are now invested with the jewel of your office. Under the direction of the Grand Master, you will conduct the musical exercises of this Grand Lodge. The office of Grand Organist is one that's particularly close to my heart. My lodge down in Milford had been without one for a little while. We have just gotten a new one, but it makes the workings of the Lodge or Grand Lodge so much better. So, Brother Grand Marshal, you will conduct the Grand Organist to his place in the Lodge, after which you will present the Grand Tylers west of the altar for installation. Present brother Richard Lemon Jr. to be installed as Grand Tyler and his associate Grand Tyler's work for brother Robert Covey, Tony Angelica, and Michael Abramson. Right worship brothers, the importance of your places in our Grand Lodge is known to all Masons. Courtesy, care, watchfulness, are essential since ours is a sanctuary entrusted to your faithful vigilance to guard at all times. 
Your place is with the door, within the door, without the door of the Grand Lodge, to which you will now retire vested with these jewels, armed with the proper instruments of your office, there to carry out your most worshipful Grand Master's will and pleasure. You will conduct the Grand Tyler and Associate Grand Tylers to their places in the lodge, after which you will present the assistant to the Grand Master. Right, worshipful brother David E. Berger, you have been appointed to serve Connecticut Freemasonry as the assistant of the Grand Master for the ensuing year, and are now invested with your jewel of office. You are to serve as the personal representative of the Grand Master in his home district when so instructed and to perform such duties as he may specifically delegate and assign to you. Your duties will be varied and may be numerous and will require flexibility and diligence. Brother installing Grand Marshal, <clears throat> you will conduct the assistant to the Grand Master to his place in the lodge. I declare the officers elected and appointed of the most worshipful Grand Lodge of the state of Connecticut, ancient, free, and accepted Masons, duly installed into their offices for the ensuing year, save the historian, in ample form. Brother and Grand Installing Marshal, you will make your proclamation from the south, east, southwest, and east. By authority of the most worshipful Grand Lodge, ancient, free, and accepted Masons of the state of Connecticut, I am directed to proclaim, and I do proclaim, that the most worshipful Grand Master and the other elected and appointed officers of the Grand Lodge of Connecticut have been duly installed in ample form. This proclamation is made in the South. By authority of the most worshipful Grand Lodge, ancient, free, and accepted Masons of the state of Connecticut, I'm directed to proclaim, and I do proclaim, that the Matthew, most worshipful Grand Master, and the other elected and appointed officers of the Grand Lodge of Connecticut are duly installed in the respective stations and places, save the historian. 
This proclamation is made. Thank you, installing Grand Marshal. Most worshipful sir, I have no more script. <laughs> I turn over your gavel to you and ask that you continue with the deliberations of the afternoon. Most worshipful brother Charlie, thank you so much. It's been a great time having my much younger friend install me. <laughs> Yeah, uh, if you don't mind, uh, just no, one thing. Brother Belmore and I were both born in the month of August uh, 1955, about nine days apart. Bruce is the older of uh, the two of us. And there's actually a distinct possibility we may have been in the same bassinets in the hospital uh, because back then ladies stayed in the hospital for a long time. Uh, we also met again when we joined VMLA and uh, continued with our Masonic career. So it's an honor for me to be able to be here and participate in this installation. And, and my other younger friend, our other younger friend is sitting over there, Chris Earle. <laughs> and we all go back to the MLA together. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. I want to mention something about the gavel. The gavel was made for me by my good friend, right works for Brother Jason Morris. And uh, I'm very pleased to use that as Grand Master this year. Brother Marshall, with the assistance of the Grand Tyler, you will present the District Deputies and Associate Grand Marshals for installation. So, Deputy Grand Master, you will assist me. Worshipful sir, I present Brother James C. Peters to be installed Associate Grand Marshal and Brother Barry F. Bertinelli Jr. to be associated as, uh, to installed as District Deputy, Masonic District 1A. Special Sir, I present Brother Barry E. Bazell to be installed as District Deputy and Brother Timothy R. Quinn to be installed as Associate Grand Marshal for District 1B. Most forceful sir, I present Brother Jack J.S. Farkas to be installed as District Deputy and Worshipful Brother David R. Urban to be installed as Associate Grand Marshal for District 1C.
most wishful sure, I present Brother Peter W. Dulcig and Brother Nathan D. Scroonover to be installed as District Deputy and Associate Grand Marshal, respectively, for District 2A. Most worshipful sir, I present Brother Daniel W. Nichols to be installed as district deputy and Brother David A. McCain to be installed as social grand marshal for District 2B. Most worshipful sir, I present Brother Peter B. Keefe to be installed as district deputy and Brother Daniel J. Reeve to be installed as associate grand marshal for District 3A. Most worshipful sir, I present Brother Mark W. Zernak to be installed as district deputy and Brother Joseph A. Zarnino, Jr. to be installed as social grand marshal for District 3B. Most worshipful sir, I present Brother Glenn A. Jacques to be installed district deputy and Brother Francis P. Barnes to be installed associate grand marshal for District 4A. Most worshipful sir, I present Brother Robert F. Polito, Jr. to be installed district deputy and Brother Mark Hubina to be installed as associate grand marshal for District 4B.
Most Worshipful Sir, I present Brother Daniel M. Luff to be installed District Deputy and Brother Robert J. Covey to be installed Associate Grand Marshal for District 4C. Most Worshipful Sir, I present Brother Thomas A. Transu to be installed District Deputy and Brother Douglas A. Ross to be installed Associate Grand Marshal for District 5A. Most Worshipful Sir, I present Brother Harry E. Needham III to be installed District Deputy and Brother Keith A. Romano to be installed Associate Grand Marshal for District 5B. Most Worshipful Sir, my pleasure to present Brother Gregory J. Stump to be installed as District Deputy and Brother David G. Larson to be installed Associate Grand Marshal for District 6A. Most Worshipful Sir, I present Brother Arnold S. Grote to be installed as District Deputy and Brian J. Burke to be installed Associate Grand Marshal, respectively, for District 6B. Most Worshipful Sir, it's my pleasure to present Brother Gordon C. Herbert Jr., the third, excuse me. 7A. 7A. Oh. Excuse me. Kurt T. O'Neill to be installed Associate Grand Marshal. Brother, Brother F. Stephen F. Seerig to be installed as district deputy. Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, my God. 
church. My pleasure to present Brother Robert G. Crowick to be installed as district deputy and Oops, excuse me. Excuse me. David S. Smith to be installed as district deputy and Gordon C. Herbert III to be installed as associate grand marshal. City also. Most merciful sir, I present Brother Robert G. Crowick to be installed as District Deputy for District 8A. Worship of Serves, my pleasure to present Brother Philip E. Rathburn to be installed as District Deputy for District 8B. Most works for search present Brother Richard S. Breer to be installed as district deputy and Brother Eric S. Breer to be installed associate grand marshal for District 9A. Most worshipful sir, present Brother Kenneth A. Wurzimer, Jr. to be installed as district deputy and br Brother Robert P. Malt to be installed as associate grand marshal for District 9B. Brother District Deputies, would you please stand? Brother District Deputies, all of you, please stand. My brothers, you will now give your attention to the charge which will be presented by Brother George Greytack, Most Worshipful Past Grand Master, Brother Greytack. Right Worshipful Brothers, our Grand Master has appointed you his District Deputy, not only for your knowledge of Masonic law and ritual, not only for your familiarity with the lodges, officers, and brothers of your district, but also for your wisdom in maintaining harmonious relations among all men. As District Deputy, you fill a most important function in this Grand Lodge. 
You are the direct and personal representative of the Grand Master. Through you, our Grand Master communicates with the lodges in your district when he himself is not present. By your work, you must earn the personal respect of the Brethren and Freemasonry's respect for your office. You have now become the window of the Grand Master and of Freemasonry, and therefore open to the observation of your Brethren. Your words must impart sagacity, justice, and mercy, loyalty to your brothers and your Grand Master, and a genuine love for all mankind. Let not your attendance at your church be your only ecclesiastical effort, for you must be known as a true man of God, a friend to your brothers, and conscious of your obligations to distressed brethren, their widows, and orphans. Let not your salute to our flag be your only visible civic duty, for you must actively support your country and your government, pledging your allegiance with heart, mind, and spirit. Let the wearing of your apron and collar and the possession of your commission attest to your previous toil for the craft, ever remembering that there is much more to be done. Accordingly, let labor, love, and duty to the fraternity remain foremost in your mind, and let there be light from your endeavors. And finally, my brothers, perform your duties with distinction, knowing that all of the brethren assembled here join with our Grand Master in the sincere wish and belief that you will accomplish your purposes. Please accept our heartiest congratulations. Thank you, Grand Master. Thank you. I love you man. First, let me thank the uh, installing team. Uh, as soon as I got appointed to the line, I knew that I wanted to have those three brothers participate and take part because they've been such a big part of my Masonic career. Uh, most works for Brother Charles A. Buck. Most works for Brother Gustafar Bodine. And most works for Brother Ken Falken great friends for many, many years, and I thank you. And most work for Brother George Greytack. Thank you. Brothers and friends, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to serve as Grand Master this year. It is a sacred trust and one that I do not take lightly. I promise that I will strive to serve you, my brothers, to the best of my ability. Freemasonry, Indeed, the whole world has just come through a period of darkness and frustration. The COVID pandemic and the subsequent lockdowns and governmental edicts made it difficult, if not impossible, for us to function as lodges. With the lifting of these restrictions and under the guidance of my predecessor, Most Worshipful Brother William Bowman, we have been able to resume and restart our gatherings and programs slowly but surely to resume the great work of Freemasonry. Most worshipful Brother Bill, we thank you for your leadership during this period. <laughs> Moving forward, we must build on this start and rebuild our fraternity. When I was raised in 1976, we had 37,000 Masons in Connecticut. We now number approximately 8,000. While I do not think that we will see the post-World War II membership numbers again in my lifetime, we must work together now to ensure that Freemasonry remains a great force for good well into the future. Let us rededicate ourselves this year to the principles that underlie our great fraternity. Let us seek opportunities to help aid and assist our brothers. Let us work diligently to spread the cement of brotherly love, relief and truth in our lodges, our homes, and our communities. We often tell the world that Freemasonry is a way of life, and it is indeed. But we must work to share that way of life with the world. We must show the world that we are a force for good a force for change, a source of light and knowledge for all. Look for opportunities in your communities, soup kitchens, food pantries, battered women's shelters, 
reading programs, just to name a few. Assist in the great work of Masonicare. Support our Demolay and Rainbow Youth, who are the future of our country and of our world. Reach out to our brothers whom we have not heard from in some time. Let our officers dedicate themselves to performing the type of outstanding ritual that our predecessors prided themselves in and that separates us from other fraternal institutions and the rest of the world. Let each of us truly be not just a man, a mason. My brothers, we have all knelt at our sacred altars and received the thrice given light. But that light does no good if it stops at the door of the lodge. We must go forward, trusting in the grand architect of the universe, guided by that greatest light in Freemasonry, and bear that light into the world that we may continue to shed Freemasonry's beneficent influence on mankind. My brothers, be the light. I thank you, and God bless you all, and may God bless our fraternity. Okay, that was long enough. <laughs> I would like to take this time to uh, recognize some groups that are here, particularly the uh, members of the Order of Eastern Star, the Merrymakers. You know, I figured I didn't have anything to do this year, so uh, my worthy matron, uh, Joanne DeVoe, hi Joanne said, you promised that when I was worthy matron, you would be worthy patron. How did I know she was going to choose this year? So I am her patron this year. So to my brothers and sisters of Eastern Star, thank you for being here. I look forward to working with you in the future. Brother Grand Almoner. I believe you have several associate Grand Almoners who need to be installed. I have three here today to present. If you would present them, please. I count four. He's a great almoner, but he can't count. <laughs> well, of course, you know, Grandmaster, we have with us Brother Ken Carwood, District 3, Brother Gary Cohen, District 4, Associate Grand Almoner, Brother Mark Fernand, District 6, Brother Raymond Moore, District 7, Associate Grand Almoners for installation. I just talked about the fact that we need to spread light and we need to help our brothers who are in need and identify them. Two years ago, Most Worshipful Brother Stephen Petrie started the Associate Grand Almoner Program. These brothers are in our districts to assist the lodges in identifying ways that we can assist our brothers because we all took those obligations to help aid and assist our brothers. But if we don't reach out to them, how will we know they need our help? The four brothers you see before you are dedicated Masons, dedicated to help aid and assist our brothers and to assist the lodges in dispensing aid from this Grand Lodge. I thank you for your service. You will please come to the East. I will invest you with your jewels.
Now, you know, when Charlie did the uh, installation, he said that I have all sorts of powers and prerogatives, and I'm about to exercise one. By virtue of the authority upon me as most worshipful Grand Master, I declare this 233rd annual communication of the most worshipful Grand Lodge of ancient free and accepted Masons of the state of Connecticut closed. Will the senior deacon attend the altar? <clears throat> Clear the Strand Lodge closed in ample form. Thank you.